Hello guys, this is Baba Stephanie of Freddy Bakers. Today I want to welcome you to our new YouTube channel, Freddy Bakers. And today we have an amazing tutorial where we are going to teach you how to make an African basket, aka Kyondo Cake. Kyondo Cake has been one of the most uh, requested videos uh, from us. And today we decided we have to give you. So uh, let's be together and make this uh, dream come true for you guys. Alright, I'm going to take you through some of the tools and uh, the ingredients that you need to have when making a candle cake. First of all, we are going to have uh, 3 kg of cakes. So I made 3 kg of cakes. This is 1 kg, 1 kg, another kg for the bottom uh, uh, part. And uh, we need buttercream. Then you need some balls where you're going to put your patterns when you cut. And uh, also you need a uh, fordant. You can see here I have uh, different fordant with different colors. We have like uh, this yellow it's, uh, and we have green, we have white and we have brown. Eh? Then uh, there are those tools that you must have when you're making a kyondo cake. So let me take you some of, through of the tools that you need. First of all, we need a smoking ribbed rolling pin. So this one, of the, uh, if you don't have this one, you cannot be able to make a kyondo. Okay, even if you can be able, uh, this one gives the best pattern in kyondo cake. Yeah? Then we have, you need a smoother. You can see, this is a fordant smoother. You need one because we need to smoothen the, the sides. Another thing that you need, you can have in pair. We have an, a very, very expensive tool here. I don't know you guys, you are going to be able to purchase this. This is one of the most amazing tool. It's called a brush. I imported it from China. Oh, did I say China? No, this is from USA. All right, so another thing that we need, huh? we need a carving knife. Some call it bread knife or a something craft knife, whatever you may call it. This is what we are going to use to, uh, to trim uh, the sides of the cake. So you need a craft knife or the carving knife. Then we need, uh, another thing that we need, we need a pizza cutter. We need to trim the excess fold and that's going to fall on the sides of the cake. So we need this one. Even when we are making the kyondo patterns, we need uh, the pizza cutter. All right, so another thing that you may need, you may need, a ri uh, sorry, the ribbon cutter. This is a ribbon cutter that we're going to make some ribbons when we are putting the on patterns. We need some dowels. We can have the plastic dowels for you to hold the cake as you trim so it doesn't move. All right. Another tool that you need, we need a rolling pin. These are rolling pin for us to roll fordants. You can have big one or small. Then we need a, we need a pallet knife. Of course, we are going to apply buttercream on the cake, so we need this. And then we need a, a ruler. I have two different rulers, so you need two rulers or more uh, because we are going to do some measurements when we are doing the patterns. Right, another thing uh, that we need, also, this is an ingredient, we need corn flour. Corn flour is used uh, while spreading fordant or rolling fordant. For fordant not to stick on your uh, surface where you are rolling the fordant, you need the corn flour. That's what we are going to, uh, to apply on the sur uh, our surfaces. All right, so that's uh, all about the tools. Maybe if I uh, forgot something. All right, this one, one more thing I've forgotten. Uh, it's called, um, let, me, let me get this. There are two tools, very important tools. All right, so we have, we have the sacto knife. This is the sacto knife or the craft knife. And uh, another tool, we need a tracing wheel. This one we need very much. Uh, it makes uh, some stitches on your kyondo when you are like you want to uh, it to look like stitches on the on the handles of the kyondo. So this one we really need, need that. It's called tracing wheel or for down uh, cutter. All right. So that's all about tools. We want to start out uh, rolling out the for and trimming. So let's go. So 
now we are going to do trimming for our cakes. Remember when you come to Kyondo, if you want to get a perfect finish, you have to do a very nice trimming because uh, most, mostly you'll see like a uh, and takes the shape of the, of the cake. So if your cake is not well trimmed, uh, it's going to bend. So we want to do a very neat uh, trimming so that we can give it a neat finish. So we're going to start with the bottom layer. So this is the bottom layer. For many people are going to ask which uh, as in uh, tin did you use to uh, bake this bottom layer? I used um, a bowl, Zilla to the supermarket, the bowl, eh? that's what I used to bake my cake so that I can have a flat bottom so I can be able to place it on a board. All right, so we're going to do trimming, All right? So remember to make it uh, straight as much as you can and flat because we want our cake to stand upright. Right, like that, and we have a very flat top, so we need a small board to put our trimming. So then, uh, after after now put uh, trimming the first cake, we are going to put sugar syrup. I'm going to give you the recipe for sugar syrup. So we need our cake to be a, a bit moist. So we spray a little. So you can get the spray bottle in the supermarket or the supermarket near you. That's enough. Then we are going to put our buttercream. Like that. Make sure it spreads well. Then I'm going to take uh, the other uh, parts. So let me start. This an orange cake. So I'm going to place it here. So the next thing, again, I trim the top. All right. Then I'm going to lay my cake. Put sugar syrup. Right, so I'm going to put some some dowels to help me, as in uh, to help the cake not move as I trim. So I'm going to put like two dowels. They must touch the the board at the bottom, like that. So those are enough. Then I take my uh, my knife, my carving knife. So I want to trim the excess. You see now, I said the front takes the shape of the of the cake. If I don't trim this part. Uh, my furnace is going to bulge out. So I'm going to uh, like um, trim the excess uh, cake, then I have uniform surface. So I'm going to start from one side, from here. So I'm going to cut inside until uh, the bottom layer is the one that is going to guide me where I'm going to stop cutting inside. So I trim. want to cover the cake. Remember when we are making a kyondo, for you to be able to stick the patterns, 
uh, you can, uh, first of all, you have to cover with the first coat of fordant so that you can be able to place the spartans uh, that you're going to put. So I'm going to put a very thin uh, uh, layer of fordant on the top, then I can be, be able to come and stick the pattern. So I need to have to, to knead this. So when you're kneading, uh, you'll need corn flour so that your fordant doesn't stick on your surface. So uh, the first thing I, I need to cover the side the and the top. So on the side, I'm going to measure from top to bottom. I see how many inches I need to uh, to roll my fordants. So I need to roll seven inches for fordants. Actually, I'm going to do uh, my kick reads seven inches, but I'm going to do a slightly a bit higher than seven just to be sure. All right. So that's the height of my fordant. Then I take my ruler. Need to be clean because fordant doesn't like anything liquid. So I'm going to measure my height. It's already uh, even longer than what I had measured. Then I'm going to take my pizza cutter. So I'm going first of all to trim. So we need to measure seven inches. So we see it because it is seven inches, I'm going to do like 7.2, just to be sure. So I go marking 7.2. So I'm going to take my pizza cutter and join up those points that I've made. Like that. Then I'm going to trim one side and the other side. Now I'm going to take my fordant, just to be sure it's a Jashika. and roll it. Then I'm going to place from one side, so it's very easy. There. Then I'm going to take my foot and smoother. a circle for me to be able to get it fit perfectly on top so I'm going to take uh, my ruler again uh, will I use inches so I see the diameter of the cake so these are 8.6 8.8 we are going to take um, a clean film and uh, measure the radius now. We saw it is 8.8, .8, so uh, radius will be 4.4. .4. So, and I have my radius here. So this one is what is going to guide me to cut a perfect circle to fit there. So I have this, remember the divider. So I take the center and go around marking very easy marking and join the dots you remember that game of joining the dots now you play it in real life join the dots 
and I have my perfect circle, like that. All right, then I take my, my photons, I place it on top, make sure it fits. You see, it fits perfectly. And the first thing that we are going to do, we are going to cut something called the separators. And the separators, I'm, uh, for now, I'm going to use my white fordant to cut the separators. So separators, when I, I talk about separators, remember our Kionto cake need different patterns uh, uh, on the cake. So I'm, uh, I want the patterns to be separated. So I'm going to put like a strip, a, stri a white strip in between. And that's what I call uh, the separator uh, strip. Eh? So that's what I'm going to make with white. So I first put the first separator, put my pattern, another one like that. So that's what I'm going to make right now. That's enough. Then we take our, we take our, we uh, nowadays they're calling it uh, Kyondo. Uh, rolling pin, but uh, the real name is uh, smoking ribbed rolling pin. So that's what we are going to uh, make pattern on our fordant. In life, you are, we are told not to go backwards for whatever, but for this one, you do it backwards. So we are going to move backwards. Eh? So you make sure you uh, press. Two lines, two lines. So remember to make them uniform. So make sure you pass through the center of the of the ribs. That's I need like five strips. Then after that, I'm going to roll them like this for me to sort them, all of them, because if I leave them, they are going to dry. First pattern, it's a green pattern. Let me explain. I want to make patterns to go all around the kick. So I want to make the first pattern, I'm going to make the easiest way you make strips of different colors you put on your cake and it will be very colorful. I'll show you to cut other patterns, but the first uh, pattern I'm going to cut that we are going to use on this on this cake is a, uh, a full strip all around, all right? We need a uh, in uh, as in same size of uh, of uh, of strips. So I'm going to use the the ribs. That's what I'm going to count. So I use seven ribs. So I'm I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So you do seven ribs per strip. So I'm going to start from this side. I count seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So seven strips.
and again I am going to count seven lines or uh, seven ribs one two three four five six seven <music> Now there's another one you can do two lines, two lines. So we are going to count two ribs, one, two, and I, I cut all through. So I have uh, different patterns of seven lines, three of them, and two lines. Then I'm going to take a ruler. So this ruler is what is going to get me to have uniform. Uh, 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 sizes. So I'm going to place this roller here. So I want uh, to have patterns this the size of this roller, as in the width of the roller. So I first of all cut the first part like here. Then now the other side gently. Then I'll keep repeating that until I have many many patterns for me to place on my cake. I'm going to take the other patterns so this one I have some more work to do because you see it's a like a square you see it's a square you can see of seven lines but I need uh, to make triangles so I'm going to cut in between uh, diagonally so to make my work easier I don't move them until I'm done with cutting the diagonal all right so I take my pizza cutter and start from bottom here. Remember to cut the same direction, all of them. So if you're not able to do as in simultaneously as I'm doing, you can take one at a time and cut through. The only thing you have to remember, they have to be the same direction. to one of our best uh, parts of candle cake placing the patterns that we have already cut so i hope you have all of, uh, we have learned how to cut the patterns now we have the green strips we have the the triangle green uh, pattern the yellow uh, strip and uh, triangles and some green here uh, i have added some this water the water we are going to use it uh, to stick our patterns on the cake so um there are many things you can use. You can use vodka, but at the moment I'm going to use water to stick uh, the patterns on my cake. And the good thing, uh, you, I, I prefer vodka over, over water because vodka dries a bit faster, all the edible spirits. But at the moment you're going to use water. So I have my cake here and I have my uh, separators here. So I'm going to start at, uh, to put my separator, the first separator. And this is, how, this is how I do. Before I put my first separator, I have my ruler. I'm going to leave, uh, to mark a distance from the uh, top of the cake, half an inch. So my first separator, I'm going to put half an inch from, uh, from the top. So I can take something just to mark. Maybe I can take my sacto knife and uh, mark here. So half an inch. So I'm going to make different marks on my cake, half an inch. 
so that's where my separator should uh, lie on so half an inch or around fr from the top remember we need it to be perfect take my pastry brushes and just just a little of water don't put a lot of water and I'm going to brush around here where now I've marked All right, just I'm going to come here where I have marked and place it around. So remember not to stretch because if you stretch, it's going to, to break. Again, before I put my pattern, I take my brush. So this is the glue for the patterns. I apply some water. Don't put a lot of water again. For the patterns, if you want to put the small patterns, you take the yellow one, you place, make sure it's straight, perpendicular straight, Okay, there's no enough water there. Let me add some water. I'm avoiding to put a lot of water so that the patterns don't fall down or slide. But if you put again little, it's not going to stick. You see it like that. I press it there. Then I take the green one and press it there. Now I'll keep repeating that. yellow, then green. So you can do all this, so yellow, green. I want to go further because I want as we place another pattern. This one I said I'm just doing a demo. So you can do all round and down here you do another pattern. So we are going to remove this. I hope we are also. I don't. I don't can you see? Like that. So we are going to remove this. So this waste now. You cannot be able to use them once you remove them. All right. All right. We are going to start with this pattern, the strip. So let me add some water just to be sure. Uh, again, another thing you're going to note, when I'm starting to place my pattern, I'm starting all of them at one point where I, they are joining. Yeah? So this is why I'm going to start the first pattern. All right. So I need to place that pattern all around. <music> then uh, applying literal water because we are going to cover them as we finish. So we place here. Remember to be gentle with the separator. Like that. Then we are going to take uh, the yellow, uh, the green and the yellow patterns like this. So you can start with any. You can start with any. So we come here. We place like that. 
then we take the other triangle and fix it like that. So we are going to work upside down. So you need another board. You place your kick. So this one you need to be very careful. Because now the candle is becoming heavy, then you can go upside down. <music> All right, now we come to the bottom part. Now we remain to cover these parts. So we are going to put a little buttercream. Just a little of it here. Like that. You said we don't put a lot of buttercream. Just something to hold the fondants on the cake. Make sure it's well spread at the at the bottom part. Just up to where the front is, like that. Then we are going to take uh, the yellow front. That's what we are going to do the finishing at the bottom with. Make patterns there at the bottom. Here, you place it on top here. So make sure it holds on the kick. Like that, then you take your saxo knife and you just cut up to that point the other fordant is. So you trim the excess one for it to fit perfectly on the cake. Now we need to place our cake back on the now the final board, yellow. Then bring them to, uh, together like that and roll. You can twist. Fold back uh, together, twist like that, and you're going to have the marble effect on your front. So you, if you want more lines, you keep twisting, but for me that's enough. And roll, just enough to cover my board. take my board and brush a little water so we said uh, you can either use water or vodka or the edible spirits then take my fondant and cover the board well I take my my fondant smoother there we go and we have our board covered, nicely covered, you can see. 
you do some little amount of water. But raising is the best if you and I place my buds here. There. Then take my kick again upside. Right side up. There. I can be able to position it well. And make sure it's okay. All right, now we are uh, almost done because we would just want to do the finishing. Put the hem of the basket, the handles, and the cover, then we are done. Remember we did, uh, this part we did uh, uh, 0 0.5 inches. So the height for these photons should be, you now for it to stand well, you need to add an inch on top. So we're going to do 0 0.5 inches, then one. So it will be 1.5. So this is what we're going to make. It's a loop leather. And this is how we do. You just come here and uh, just punch, punch, punch until you get the leather back. You keep repeating it. Now you're going to measure from this side, not from the bottom side. So make sure it's 1.5 inches from the top. So 1.5. And you mark. around don't put a lot of it again then we start putting it around then we're going to take our ruler and pizza cutter All right, for the height of the of the handle, it should be around four inches. So I'm going to mark four. All right, there we go. Have that. Then for the width, it's supposed to be. 3.5 so you can measure one cut then place on top of the other one so to have same size like that Right, so we have our two handles here. So you can have rounded edges. So you just cut the edges. Like that. All right, then after you have them like that, you Take uh, your pizza cutter and cut a little bit inside, both sides, even the other one, the same thing, around uh, almost halfway. Then you take your sector knife, 
and cuts. And remove the inside parts. Right, that's enough. All right, so there goes our handles. Then you can uh, have this tool. This is called uh, a stitching tool or tracing wheel. We need to make it, uh, our handles look like they are stitched on the on the kiondo or the basket. So this is what makes uh, it look like it is stitched. So you can see this. Uh, I'm just pressing gently round here. Like that. So I'm going to do on both both of them. Like that. So you see now it's giving us a pattern like it is stitched, you see. Alright, so uh, this one is what we are going to place here. So it looks like the handle. So again, we take our royal icing. So we take our royal icing here. We just press our royal icing. So remember we said we are going to use royal icing for us to stick these heavy fordants on the cake. Like that. Make sure we don't see the rising because we need to see just the handle. So you see the point where I joined my uh, my strips. That's where I'm going to place the first, as in uh, handle. So gently I come here. I place my handle like that. You see, now we have something like it's a handle. Then we take the other one, the same thing. Direct opposites, the other one. Just a little bit raised from the hem or the the, uh, the strap, the top strap, just a little bit raised. Again, remember we said we are working with seven lines. So I'm going to count seven lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you cut through. take uh, maybe I can divide this by two so this is where now I want us to learn how to make a knot so we take we take uh, a long strip this is how you hold the longer part at the bottom side then you crisscross I hope my camera can capture this you crisscross, then the longer part goes down, straight up. So remember the lines should uh, face upwards. Then gently you pull. You keep pulling until you get the perfect notes. Keep pulling, keep pulling until you get a perfect knot like that. So we're going to start with the strap. We are going to put some racing inside here. 
don't put a lot of weeds because you don't want people to see uh, the the rising. So you put on both sides. So you start from one side here. Let me start here. You put uh, inside here, you press gently for it to fit there. Then you have two options. You can let the strap as in lie on top of the board like this or around up to the other point like that. But the, 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 other, uh, the, uh, the, the worst thing about this eh, is if, when the cake is traveling and uh, the forearm dries up, it's going to break. So the, the best is you make sure the strap uh, lies on top of the kick itself, like that. So up to the other side, I hope you can see, like that. So you, you're going to pinch here, so it uh, sticks on the royal icing that we put. Then we can take our sacto knife and cut the excess. Even the other side, you pinch, you cut. Then uh, you can take um, some raw icing because you don't need, uh, you want this uh, st strap to hold on the cake. You just put a little raw icing. So it will hold. So even if the kick is traveling a long distance, uh, the strap won't break when it dries up. So that's how you make sure the strap is intact up to the destination where it goes. Last but not least, we are going to place our knots. So you put some bracing on top here and on the side where the, the strap is and a small line there. You take the first strap here, then it holds here. So you can see no uh, it looks like a real knot. Then uh, you can take some scissors. Well, you if you can find your scissors, you can take just the sector knife and just cut. But the scissors are the best. And you can take a toothpick for the knot to hold before it dries up. Eh? You need a toothpick to help it hold. So you take a toothpick, you put just inside here. Remember you put uh, in a way that once it dries up, you can be able to remove the toothpick. So like that. And then we come the other side. We take the other knots. Let me just cut first because it's very long. Come here and make sure it looks real on the cake, like that. But not least, uh, we need to cover the cake uh, with either, you, when, uh, when uh, the African or the traditional um, mamas, when they visit their children at urban city, they carry the, the fruits, the ndoma and everything. Eh? So they have to make sure the kyondo is covered. Eh? So I'm going to steam. Let's see the effects. All these white parts are going to clear. And leaves your kyondo very neat. And well done. You can see, looking awesome. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, it has been your boy, Baba Steph. And for me and our friendly bakers, and Wakaji Baker's Heaven Fraternity. I want to take this chance to thank you all.
And may God bless you in all you do. So God bless. Toodles.